I tell you where we're going to spend most of our time today will be in the book of Luke chapter 2. It'll be a little while to get there. We'll, we'll have some other scriptures if you're taking notes, and I, I do encourage you to take notes. I even try to let pastors and preachers know that come here. A lot of times you may not hear amens in our church because folk are taking notes. Y'all catch that? I'm taking notes. I ain't got time to say amen every time you want me to say amen. And I'm not trying to be mean to any of our preachers, but I, I like a good amen, but it needs to be on time. <laughs> Timing's important. Everybody say timing. timing. So important. Did you know that my old vehicle, I know the new ones are this way, but my dad always had a timing light. And he would time the, you know, the old cars, the 350s, the 440s, the 383s, the 340s, the really good engines. You would have to take that timing light and you'd shine it in there. And I remember watching that timing light as that, as that uh, um, would go around and you'd see a bar on there. And it would connect with the other bar and that light would catch it just right. It means that the pistons and the plugs and everything was hitting just at the right time to make that engine run perfectly. And I think sometimes every believer in here needs a timing light. Amen. As you've moved through life, I know I'm talking some old school stuff here, but as you move through life that you get your time right. If you get out of sync, you, your life starts getting out of whack. And all of a sudden you start sputtering and puttering. How I many find as you get older, you sputter and putter just a little bit more? Uh-huh. So we get, need to get a spiritual timing light, amen, to shine down in there to get everything working right. It's funny how that came back. I, I didn't have no thought of that until I walked in this pulpit this morning, but just how timing is so important. We're going to talk about Christmas time right now and the importance of Christmas time. The word time literally means the stretch of duration in which things happen. Amen. It's, just, it's, a, it's a duration of something. Something's got to happen in here, and it's irretrievable. You cannot get it back. Once time has passed, you don't get it back. That's why today is important for you. Every day you got is so important. To kind of do your best to plan out what's going to happen. You can never repeat it or relive it. When I look at my kids and how fast they've grown and my grandkids, how quick they've grown, I, really, I, can't, I can't go back on time. And there are regrets. I don't care what you say. My brother, many years ago, he put no regrets on his, on his arms. He later tattooed over that. You'll get that. I've often thought about no, but I have had regrets. I've had times I wish I could go back and change some things and, and rework. I have some different time with people. Amen. I've loved this phrase. It's about a friend of mine in California where he said, somewhere in infinity, God interrupted a place called eternity. This is an amazing statement. He just interrupted it, a place called eternity, and he created a space called time. For a place called earth and a race called mankind. God interrupted this place. And he said, you know what? I'm going to put an earth there. And I'm going to put my people there. And they're going to be my family. I'm not going to have grandkids. I'm just going to have kids. Amen. I'm going to put them there. God lives in and out of time. Amen. God can come into time. God comes out of time. That's why we always get a little messed up when it comes to time. We think when we all get to heaven, somebody been to heaven 30 years before us, when you get to heaven, it's going to be as if, because they're outside of time when they're in heaven. They don't even recognize this time. So when we get there, it'll be as if we just got there and they just got there. Yeah. You follow me? It's, it's kind of mind-blowing when you think about time. Amen. There's a time, the Scripture says, for everything and a season for every activity under earth. There's a time for it. Life is measured according to events. Now, I got to move quickly. I got a lot of things. I told you I got a lot to cover. So you might want to snap pictures here if you need to or whatever you need to do to take this down. But there are three types of time. There are seasons. There's appointed time. And there's fullness of time. There's seasons. There's appointed time. And then there are fullness of time. When you talk of seasons, you talk about the word time is keros. We use the word uh, a keros season of time, an opportune season of harvest. Uh, biblically, there are harvest times that take place in churches. That's why you just keep cultivating, you keep sowing seed, you keep watering, and eventually, boom, you have this revival that takes place. You say, well, how did that happen? That took place over time that there were seeds planted and water given, and then God brought forth the harvest. Amen. It was a special season, a reciprocating time 
time of climate change. Each season is necessary for the next. Now, real, real quickly about seasons. Seasons are not all the same length. I don't care if it says uh, summer started today in Texas. That don't mean nothing. Amen. The seasons have a particular time. A season has a beginning and an end. Again, seasons always come in sequence, winter, spring, summer, fall. Again, unless you live in Texas. You don't know. I, I remember when I got here, I thought, well, we got winter coming. <laughs> we weren't even out of fall, you know, until. And then winter was just a little stretch and a really, really cold day, which pipes broke. You know, that was winter for us. It's just like, but up north, they, they, they have all this winter. Uh, crops of success may be cultivated like a garden in several areas of your life simultaneously. We go through seasons in our own life. God brings forth peace, love, joy. Sometimes there's a time you loved more, but then after a little while, you had love, joy, peace. These fruits came forth during those seasons of time. But each person is responsible to manage the seasons of their life. Everybody here has seasons. There's a pointed time. An understanding of time and purpose, amen, it's personal. Let me just, uh, I know it's a lot here for you to grab hold of, but pastor, there's death, there's life, there's being born again. What are these? These are appointed time. I believe that God appointed that 1979, November the 10th, that God appointed the day that I would get born again. I may have not have seen it, but God set it up for me, amen, that that day was my time, amen. And so I go back and I recognize that time. It's my spiritual birthday. I, I look at it. I, I, I understand it. There's a time to pass. This week I got two phone calls, one from Howie Dalry. Some of you know Howie, amen. His wife Adriana passed away this week, amen, probably in her late 40s, early 50s. Uh, cancer had attacked her body again. And we love Howie. Many of you remember Howie uh, playing music in this church church. We love him. He called me late the other night and let me know it. The other one I, I, uh, was Patsy Riggs. Is, I think it's her niece. Her name is Cheryl Bullard. They go to our church out in the other campus. Been with me 15 plus years. Amen. Always on cruises. But her, and I, I thought it was her daughter, but I think it's her niece. Amen. But Cheryl just got into some chemicals at work. Something happened and she, she struggled breathing. The next day she collapsed and passed away. And, and these are the things that happen I, I don't understand them, but they're appointed. So when it happens, as a matter of fact, I've ordered larger uh, boards in the back for people who have passed that have been a part of this church because we need to know what they did here matters there. And we need to walk by that board. You need to thank God for all the people that you see on that board back there. Amen. And, and who knows, one day I might be on that board back there. But I do have an appointed time that God's going to take me out of here. Don't we, Patsy? Amen. We understand that. Acts 17, 26 says, and he determined the time set for them and the exact places where they should live. You can get mad. You can get frustrated. You can say, I wish I was born in the 1800s so I could walk around with six shooters and, amen, and, and, and ride horses and, and meet Jesse James, amen, and I would be Jacob James. And, and you don't know, listen to me. God chose the time for you to be here, and he chose the place for you to live. Why well, I hate living here in Northeast Houston. God chose for you to be here in Northeast Houston. I know some of you say, well, I wish I was in, the, I was born in the Appalachian Mountains, where it's beautiful. I say, Lord, I wish I was back there, but God put me here. So I'm going to quit fighting with God. Amen. Quit arguing with it and accept the fact that, God, you put me here at this time and this place. And listen, ain't nothing saying I can't wear six shooters, ride a horse, and, 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 and shoot. Hello. Amen. I'm in Texas. I've been doing that for 25 years, <laughs> riding horses, shooting off horses, riding. I don't do it now. Why don't you do it now, Pastor? Seasons. <laughs> Everybody say Seasons. seasons. There was a season when I really enjoyed riding horses and shooting off of them with six shooters and playing the cowboy. But after a couple of hospital visits, I realized my season was quickly coming over. <laughs> I don't care. You want to be old ride horses? Help yourself. I'm sticking with a Walmart horse right now. <laughs> the third type of time is fullness of time. Everything's in place for 
Christmas. It was amazing. It was a fullness of time. Amen. Everything was in place. Galatians 4, 4. And when the fullness of time was come, everybody say fullness, was come, God sent forth His Son, made of a woman, made under the law. So God set this thing up that when the time was right, that He would send forth His Son. It was a, and it, the truth of the matter is, as we talk about this, you're going to think to yourself, it didn't look like the right time. You know, we always think about time. I, I hear people talking about having children. It just didn't seem like the right time to have that child. And yet God sent forth his child. Amen. Well, I, you know, in adoption issues, you know, I've, I've had a lot of the, uh, uh, blessings in the area of adoption. It didn't seem like the right time to adopt. You see, I was living in a, in a, a brick-and-mortar home here in Texas as a youth pastor, and I had, I had extra bedrooms, but then I sold it and bought a, a minivan, an Aerostar van. Y'all remember them Aerostar? Bought me an Aerostar van, and I was traveling around the country, and I was playing golf down in Mobile, Alabama with a pastor from Citronelle, and I got a phone call. There's a little girl that would like for you to be her daddy. Would you consider that? And I thought to myself, yes. I almost slipped a word right there. They'll believe two picks. Yes, I would like to be her daddy. And I, I left the golf course in the middle. Or I think it was the 17th hole, Joseph. I walked away from golf at that moment and took off up to Fort Smith, Arkansas to adopt a little baby girl. It didn't seem like the right time. She was 11 months old. And when the second one came, it didn't seem like the right time. Because now we're living out of a van down by the river. Right. Some of y'all ain't going to get that. But it didn't seem like the right time. Time is important. Can I get an amen? But sometimes you just got to fit things into the time that you got. Let me talk to you real quick about Christmas. 1 Peter 3.15. But put in your hearts, set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. In other words, don't be mean toward people when they ask you why you think you're going to heaven. Can I tell you that you got to quit calling me and say, Pastor, tell this person why I'm going to heaven. <laughs> tell, uh, Pastor Joseph, will you, will you tell them why, why, why I believe what I believe? Pastor Dave, will you tell them why I believe what I believe? No, you tell them why you believe what you believe. Yeah. You got a hope inside of you, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. He's pregnant inside of you. Amen. That's who you are. You're, you're becoming more like the image of Christ. You need to tell them. So when it comes to Christmas, this, this is so important. All your Christianity hinges on two things, the virgin birth and the resurrection. Jesus was born of a virgin, amen, and he resurrected from the dead. He's not in a tomb no more. You got to be able to share that with people respectfully, without being mean about it. Amen. Amen. That's what it says here. Because all of it, in all the Old Testament, they were anticipating his arrival. I want to say revival. Arrival. Amen. I remember telling you, when you lie to little kids about Santa Claus and how Santa Claus is coming down a chimney on the 24th and you ain't even got a chimney. How, how dumb do you think your kids really are? They got to figure this thing out eventually. Jonathan, did I hurt your feelings right there? You know there ain't no such thing as Santa Claus. I know it. Go ahead and get it in your noggin. Amen. So there ain't no such thing. So, so you, you, we're lying to our kids about all that. It, it, and then we, it, it, the whole issue about lying to them is, is we disrespect Jesus and the birth of Jesus. But trying to tell our kids some type of fantasy story. Amen. But there's something about waiting. The Old Testament was waiting on the arrival, the arrival of Jesus. The validity of even the smallest part of the, the Scripture teeters on the miracle of that virgin birth. The Scripture says that therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Everybody say a sign. Oh, I've looked for signs in travel. I've looked for exit signs. Amen. I've, I've looked for opportunities. Tell me I was almost there. A sign means so much. When you're on a scooter, you're looking for signs. You're looking for this sign right here when you're on a motorcycle. 
That sign right there means everything to a biker. When you get that sign, come on now. That sign right there means we finna have some fun. Amen. I love them signs like that. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. I want you to understand the gender. The virgin was a woman. The boy was going to, the, the, the child was going to be a man. Can I get an amen? Yeah. Amen. So it lays it out. A sign. The word sign is an oath, a signal, a flag. A beacon, beep, 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 a monument or an omen, something you got to look for. So they were prophetically looking for this sign. Amen. God began to lay it out in Luke chapter 2, verse 1. In those days, Caesar Augusta issued a decree. He's the leader of the nations there. That a census would be taken of the entire Roman world. He wanted to know how many people, where they were from, what was their culture, what was their nationality. This was the first census that took place. And everyone went to their own home to register. So they had to go back home. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee and Judah to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house in the line of David. It doesn't say that Mary belonged there. Joseph belonged there. So Jesus was going to come from that lineage. So he he goes back to the house of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. Huh. When I read this, I think of that expectation of this baby. And while they were there, the time came. Well, hold on. We're talking about timing. How many understand to take a woman that's eight and a half months pregnant and take her from Nazareth to Bethlehem on a, a rough journey. You're not riding on shocks. <laughs> if you own anything, it's got a little bounce to it. it. If you're walking, it's got a little bounce to it. So she's on her way, and she's pregnant, amen, with Christ. They have no choice here but to go. She came, for the, she came there, and while they were there, the time for the baby to be born, she gave birth to her firstborn a son. She wrapped him in clothes, placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. They were in the horse shed, if you would, the stable there being the more like a feed trough. Amen. She, she laid him in that that little manger. She wrapped him in, in swaddling clothes. And when I'm reading that, do you understand from the book of Malachi, Malachi in the Old Testament to Matthew, there are 400 years. It's amazing to me. I, I love the fact that God kept it simple. How long were, were the Israelites in bondage to the Egyptians? 400 years. God uses four, 400 40, 40 years in, in, in the promised land, 400 years. So he made it so it ain't so hard for us to understand. How many of you know that God realizes we're pretty simple people? So he said, I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to go 400 years from Malachi to Matthew, and I ain't going to say nothing. This is how I know God's a man. He just shut down. I ain't saying nothing. Anything I say seems to be used against me. <laughs> so 20,800 weeks passed. 146,000 days passed. 3,504,000 hours passed. Then God sent his son into the womb of a virgin. Through the Holy Spirit. And that baby come out. Bah! First words God said after 400 years. Bah! <laughs> come on, can I get an amen? It was not a cry of despair, it was a cry of victory. Amen. That baby began to cry in that manger up in that stable. Amen. The horses are hee-hawing. The cows are a-mooing. The dogs are a-barking. The cats are meowing. And some idiot wrote a song called Silent Night. <laughs> there wasn't nothing silent about the night that Jesus showed up. Can I get an amen? 
I'm just telling you, I want to defend God at this very moment. Everything is different now that Christ has come into the world. It was astounding the claims relating to Christmas. An angel visited a virgin who became pregnant by the Holy Spirit. A baby in her womb was the Son of God from heaven. God caused a heathen emperor to call for a taxation and sent Mary and Joseph back to Bethlehem at the very moment Jesus was born, knowing he had to be in Bethlehem for the birth. Prophets foretold the virgin birth and his birth in Bethlehem hundreds of years before it happened. A star led the Magi, the wise men from the east, directly to the house of where the child Jesus, probably two and a half, three years old, was. Angels spoke to shepherds. The angel spoke to Joseph three times in a dream. Three times an angel had to tell Joseph, Joseph, wake up. Joseph, that woman, don't put her away. Joseph, you're going to have the Christ child. Joseph, he had to keep dealing with Joseph. Angels, I love angels. An angel spoke to the Magi, warning them not to return to Herod. Amen. And Herod had wicked intentions. Even the slaughter of the infant boys of Bethlehem fulfilled ancient prophecy. And when aged Simon held the baby Jesus in Luke chapter 2 in his arms, he prophesied his death on the cross. All of this is the Christmas story. Nobody would want a pastor to hold a child and say, excuse me, your baby's going to be dead before he's 33. He prophesied he's, he's living in the shadow of a cross, but his death will bring forth the life of many. There were reasons and names he is given. Isaiah 9, 6, for unto us a child is born, a son is given. The government will be on his shoulders. He'll be called Wonderful Counselor. Now listen, you could throw a comma if you want to there. You could call him Wonderful and Counselor, but I can't find a comma in the Scripture, so I'm going to call him a Wonderful Counselor. I tell folks this all the time. I can't counsel you. When the pastor can give me counsel, I can't counsel you. Amen. I serve under the Wonderful Counselor. He can counsel you. I can give you advice. It's either good or bad. But if I counsel you, I'm going to charge you money. Why is that? Because if I don't charge you, you won't do it. Can I get an amen? It's just life. I'm just telling you. So I don't want to charge you. I don't want to give you counsel. I give you good advice or as best advice I can with the life that I've already lived. I have advisors. They give me advice. I need advice at times. And he goes on to say he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Amen. He's Jesus, Savior, Emmanuel, God with us. These were all Christmas words about the Savior coming, Son of the Most High, Christ the Lord. Then there were the things he will accomplish. He's going to save his people from their sins. Why is he coming? He's going to save his people from their sins. What do we need? We need saving. He will reign from David's throne in Jerusalem in his kingdom never end. Amen. You understand we're still in the kingdom? You are in a kingdom. Amen. You are servants of the king. Hallelujah. That's why we worship the king this morning. Because we're in the kingdom. It ain't just coming to church. We're part of the kingdom. But it looked like bad timing. It just looked bad. I mean, after 400 years, God, you couldn't figure out an easier time. You understand the Romans and the Jews are fighting against one another. There's a political upheaval. There's all kind of wickedness in the land. There's a Herod out there. God, it just looks like bad timing. Amen. Let me help you a little bit. Mary ain't even married. And now she's pregnant? <laughs> Joseph is not young. That's the way they did it then. So Joseph was connected with Mary. She literally is probably, and, and I know this may shock you, but she's probably 15-year-old, somewhere in that age. That was their culture. So she's pregnant. Her cousin Elizabeth's pregnant. It's just like, boom, boom, things are happening. Miracles are happening all over the place. So the birth of Jesus is going to be in an occupied territory, Bethlehem. There's no support system in Bethlehem. Strange town, strange people, strange place. I know enough about pregnancy and mamas. They want the right people around them. They want to be at the right place. They want to make sure the hospital is sterile. They want to make sure everything is just right. This, nothing was right for this. It's just a mess here. Amen. The housing situation was absolutely inadequate. Hey Amen. There was no, I, I, when I'm traveling, I will often, whoever I'm with now that we got these wonderful things called cell phones, I'll have somebody call ahead and get us reservations. Right. Josiah, you're fixing to leave today and go to South Carolina with your beautiful bride, and you've already shown me your reservations outside Mobile, Alabama. Roll Tide. Hey Amen. So, uh, <laughs> so, I see, I see you already got, but, but they couldn't call ahead to the Holiday Inn because there was no room at the inn. 
There was nothing there for them. to. So they ended up in the barn. There's no room there. So Mary, what, what do you think of the timing of the birth of the child? It doesn't seem right. Let me just tell you this. It doesn't seem to be the right time for a lot of things. It doesn't seem to be the right time for a layoff, a wayward child leaving home, an unexpected water leak, families to leave the church. Amen. It doesn't seem the right time to have an emergency situation, to have a flat. It's never the right time to have a flat. Amen. Timing never seems right at certain times. But God, in his infinite wisdom, said, you know what? This is the right time. I'm going to send forth my time. son. Amen. It's the fullness of time. He sent forth his son made of a woman, made under the law. According to the word of God, he was just in time. Genesis 3.15, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. Well, hold on a minute. That whole scripture there is showed up in the uh, uh, Old Testament, Genesis, chapter, the third chapter of Genesis, the very beginning after Satan has beguiled Adam and Eve and God has a conversation among several. He said, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. What are you talking about? God, amen. He's talking about his son that he's going to send. God had a plan from the very beginning knowing that we were going to screw everything up. <laughs> I mean, it's a spiritual Holy Ghost setup. God knew we were going to mess up. So he already had a plan back here to send Jesus in the fullness of time to crush the head of the devil. He said, I'm going to crush your head with a seed, man. You don't think a seed's powerful? You wait till it gets here. So all through the Old Testament, we see Satan trying to destroy the seed. He's always trying to destroy it. With, uh, the issue with uh, uh, Pharaoh killing all the little boys around Moses' time was trying to find the seed. All the way up and through, uh, we get into the promised land, the seed. The God hid the seed. Who did he hide it? He hid it in Rahab the prostitute. You'll never think to look there. He hid the seed. He just hiding the seed all the way up till he could get the seed over to Mary. 400 years after all that silence. Then to be born of a virgin. Therefore, the Lord himself will give a sign. The virgin will be with child. Amen. Going to call him Emmanuel, God with us. He, he's going to be born in Bethlehem. But you, Bethlehem, though you are small among the clans of Judah. That's why I don't let nobody put Crosby down. Don't put no small towns down. I'm from a small town. If you try that in a small town. <laughs> ain't going to happen, my friend. Amen. We love small towns. Thank God for small towns. Amen. Yeah. Mm, Houston's just a suburb of Crosby. He was visited by wise men. Psalm 72, Old Testament. The kings of Tarsus and of distant shores will bring tribute to him, gifts to him. The kings of Sheba and Seba will present him gifts. They brought gold. They brought frankincense. They brought myrrh. It wasn't three wise men, a lot of wise men. It was an entourage. Amen, it showed up. Many fell because, let me start closing here. Many fell because they're out of sync with time and the place. They got the, the timing light, and you, 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 can, you got to connect over here instead of over here. You got to eventually start saying, and, and they had to reach up and grab that distributor. I'm talking old school yeah. stuff. He reached up and grabbed that distributor, and he loosened it up, and he started turning that distributor. Amen, and as he turned, distributors where all the plugs go in, sir. I know your wives are having to tell you that right now. But so all the plugs go in there. Amen. So, so, so you grab that distributor and you start turning that thing. Amen. And as you turn that distributor, all of a sudden there's a lineup right here. Oh, Holy Ghost. Reach and grab the distributors. The head. That's your distributor. Your head. How you think. That's where your distributor is, Keith. Right in there. God, grab your head and turn it just enough. To get you to start lining back up again. Because once you line up, you're running good. You sound good. You're not puttering and sputtering. Amen. Man, you must have gotten church this morning. What happened? You damn, I got my distributor adjusted. God turned that thing. Yeah, the word, and I, this is not by no means, but they retard it. They turn it. See, some of y'all need just a little twisting to get your head right. Mm, Holy Ghost talking this morning through the preacher. See, many fail because they're out of sync with time and place, and you can get a failure-anticipating mindset. 
We always failed, always down, always negative, always pessimistic. Amen. Always upset. I go hunting with a guy. And I go duck hunting with him. While I'm out duck hunting, amen, I'm, I'm so negative. He invites me to go duck hunting with him. I go duck hunting with him. All of a sudden, he shoots three ducks, and his dog runs out on the water, walking on the water, grabs a duck, puts it under one arm, grabs another duck, stick another arm, stuck a duck in his mouth, and comes walking back on the water and drops the ducks. And all you can see is, why can't your dog swim? So negative, negative, negative. Our time matters. What we do here, as Pastor David, it matters. It matters there. Our lifetime is the soil in which our destiny is sown, cultivated and harvested. Our time on earth, if not used properly, will cost us our God-given destiny, and destiny is expensive. Your time is so important. Listen. I know many of you want to give gifts, but your time with somebody. I had a little time with Jerome this week. It was, it was precious to me. Uh, when you have time with people, it means something. You get to impart and be imparted. Amen. You get to make that connection. I saw Miss Dolly at least two Christmas parties already this week. I know she get an investment, you know, and she's wise to so spend time with her. The elderly, need, we need time with them. Time is your most valuable commodity you've got. It's irretrievable. You don't get it back. Amen. When God set things in motion in time, he said, you get 24 hours in a day. You don't get 20, so you get 24. So you've got to learn to use your time wisely. How we spend our time on earth ultimately determines what will be recorded about us in heaven. Our time spent with our Father is directly related to our understanding of not only who we are, but what we are here to do. If I don't spend time with Him, if I don't get to know Him, I don't know why He made me, why He sent me. I wasn't born. I was sent here. Amen. Via Alabama, roll tight. Amen. So God put me here for a reason. I apologize for the second one. That was unnecessary. Remember when Jesus rescued you? He was just in time. You're just in time. Luke 2, we finished Luke 2, 8. And there were shepherds living out in the fields. Nearby keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them. And the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, don't you be afraid. Don't be scared. I bring you good news. Great joy that will be for all the people. What did I tell you about God and being quiet? When God decided to speak, he decided I'm going to let it. He told the angel what to say. So why not you show up and tell him. That had to be one of the most exciting times in heaven. Because heaven knew what the Father was doing. They knew what he was up to. And 400 years on earth had passed, but it passed like that in heaven. That's how heaven is. And then God looked at an angel and he said, go down there and talk to him. He said, you want me to go to the king? No, don't go to the king. How, how about to the princesses? No, don't go to the princess. What about the governors of the land? No, don't, don't go to the governor. Well, well, how, where do you want me to go, Father? Send me where you want me to go. Go to the angel. Go to the shepherds. Go to the shepherds. Go to the lowly. Go to the ones that are out there night after night after night looking after the sheep. Because I want people to know that I am a great shepherd and I will look after the sheep. I want you to go. So, boom, he goes. And he says to them, today in the town of David. So, while the angel is going, David, in the town of David, Joseph and Mary are there and the baby's being born. All this is sinking up. Huh? It's sinking up. Timing is looking right right here. God's moving the earthly distributor and setting this thing up. And while he's there, in the town will be born to you. He's Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You'll find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly. Everybody say suddenly. Suddenly. A great company of the heaven host appeared with the angel praising God and saying, and this is what always hit me. The one angel got there before the rest of them. It was like, well, you know, there had to be this thing in heaven about who's the fastest. 
I'm fasting. And he gets there and he talks to the angel. And then the rest of them, ah! and then the glory shows. And, the, and it's like the, the sh light is shining. And they're yelling, glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace to men to whom his favor rests. All of this was in sync. All of this was on time. Amen. But they used the word great joy. Great, not just joy. Great joy. You, you understand the word joy, Karis, has to do with like a dog chasing his tail. You know, I got a dog with no tail. He can't do it, but he can wag his nub. But the, but the, but the other two dogs and strays we got, I got one, this, this young one. She's, she's messed up a little, but she's, she'll start chasing her tail. It's hilarious. It's like, what would you like to do? I want to chase my tail. And she just chases her tail around and around. And that's what the word joy means. To be so excited, you'd spin around. But then you throw the word great. Great is the word mega in the, word, in the Greek language. Mega joy. Mega. We use mega drinks. Uh, mega weight loss. Mega this, mega that. I, I, start, I quit golf for 20 years. I started playing again. The club, the club that I used to play, uh, uh, Joseph's using now, it's about, it's about that big, the driver head. 20 years later, mega. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I'm in a, with a Toys R Us or something. You know? it's, just, it's just things huge. What, you know, what, what happened? You know what? You know how far the mega golf club hits? About as far as the old ones. <laughs> but it just still makes you feel important. Today, mega joy to all the people. No one's admitted. When the Lord makes it close and personal for those that is born to you this day of Savior. To you in the middle of whatever it is your pain. Whatever it is you may think is bad timing. The difficulty, the anger, frustration, sin, or failure. To you and I today, a Savior has been born. You may not see the promise fulfilled. But you will see the promise present. I may not see all the promises God's made toward me that I've believed for while I'm here. But I promise you that I believe that it'll be fulfilled. That my children and my grandchildren and the people that I'm connected with will be saved and I will see them in the kingdom. There at the foot of the cross, we come and receive the ultimate gift of eternal life through Christ, the Son of God. I remember when I, I gave my life to the light of the world. He's what he is. He's the light. They wrapped him in swaddling clothes. That, those clothes were used to wrap around the, 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 the torches at night to light the, he was the light of the world. And people who know the eternal truth of God's Word, they celebrate with joy. And in the next few weeks, you'll gather for a Christmas gathering. Amen. And you'll be able to kindle the fire of the great truth. They, many of you have already started decorating. Uh, I've seen your social media pictures, Susan. I saw pictures of your house already. Amen. So now we know where you live. All the lights and the tinsel and the trees and I was at a friend's house the other day he had a tree dressed like the Grinch yeah. it was all Grinched up and I, I Naya was there and he's all into the Grinch he likes the Grinch amen and it, it, the kids were going crazy over that the Grinch is not in the Bible no yes he is <laughs> he's the never mind I'll leave it there those things aren't the substance of the joy, the tree and the tinsel and the lights, but they are the kindling that sparks and reminds us that Christmas is a time to embrace the promise with rejoicing and let the spirit of celebration fill your heart. I love Christmas time. It reminds me of his birth, the promise, heads bowed, eyes closed. We mentioned God twisting a little bit of our distributor. Amen. Changing our minds. Could I pray over you this morning that God would help you understand that you need to sync up with this time to not be all humbug, to not be all pessimistic, but to step into a time. Amen. That God in the fullness of time sent forth his son. Amen. He did this the right time. If you say, Pastor, I feel like I've been a little out of sync. Would you lift your hand right now with your heads closed? I mean, bowed and your eyes closed. Yeah, their hands all over the room. I feel out of sync. Sometimes it's the weather that does it. 
It's just too warm. I don't, but God sent forth 40 degree change just for you to remind you. Father, I pray with the hands that are lifted. Adjust us. Put us back in timing. Give us a right sink of understanding. We in the right place at the right time with the right people. You put us here for a reason. You'll move us when you tell us to move like you will the Clowers family. We'll know it's you. Peace will overcome our hearts and we'll know that you'll move us. But until then, God, we're at the right place at the right time. Now, you did that so you could use us for your purpose and your glory. Now we're asking that you use us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm asking God to use you this year. We're going to close out this year. You know why we're going to have a good end of the year? Because we had a good beginning. And when we start January again, we're going to have a good beginning. Amen. We're going to start it right again. Hallelujah. Love this house. If I could get you to reach and grab a tithe and offer an envelope. And I thank you for your faithfulness. You know, it's, it's the end of the year. Some folk wait to the end of the year to give a little more than they normally would. But I want to ask you to do something else for me. Uh, who got those? I told Jalisa, who's going for five months to three Muslim countries, that if you're going to go, you're going to go by faith. This ain't something I'm just going to pay for. We're not just going to pour the money out for this. You're going to have to believe God that this church and the churches around you are going to help you. So I want them to give you very quickly. Who's got them? If you, if, you, uh, one on each side. if you want one of these cards, it's just a blank card, but I'm using this card so I can catch what's going on here. All you got to do is write your name on it and say, I'll pray. That's it. I'll know you're praying for Because if our daughter is, if you know where, uh, what's it called, Katie, Tech, Techistan? No, she's going to Turkey later. Tech, Techistan is northwest of China. Y'all know where China is in New Caney. It's a long way. Okay, so be praying for her. The second thing I'd like for you to do, if you would like to give something over the next five months, write that on that card. You don't have to give it today. I just need to know how much by faith. Because if she runs out of money, she comes home. That's how, that's how this thing works. If you don't have the finances to fly, your last flight is back to Houston. So I told her it's going to be by faith. Now, we were on our way home. And, uh, and this is only for five months. You know, we got 12 people we're sending to Guatemala later on this year also. So we got a lot of missions things we want to do. But first, I want to make sure she's taken care of. So, if, you know, my wife found we're going to support Jill $1,000. But that's over five months. So I don't have to give it 200 a month. You follow what I'm doing? But I need to know from this church how much you're willing to bless her and to help her. And uh, this is not something she gets put in the bank. This is something that supports her trip there so she can drink fermented horse milk and if you don't know my daughter then you don't understand she will reach people for Jesus Amen. she is about it she, she blows my mind it's not my fault God did this for her Amen. and I understand the, the, the gift of God on her life the anointing so <clears throat> if you'd like to help chill out I'm only going to do this today so later on if you come to me that's up to you but I'm not going to keep mentioning this uh, I love the kid I think she's going to do great there. She's, she's learning so much, isn't she, Katie? She just picks it up. She's, and uh, right now, she's in Washington, D.C. with a group of lawyers. She's going to become a lawyer. For those, if you've seen the movie, The Sound of Freedom, about children who have been kidnapped and, and sold into sex slavery, she's going to be a lawyer to represent them. That's her goal. So uh, I see that happening. The kids got it going on. So if you'd like to help her, uh, first pray for her. Second, if you'd like to give, just write it on the card. Drop it in the, in the box as it goes around. And you have your tithe and offering envelopes also. And you can also give, uh, just write, I don't know exactly how this works, Katie, for special things online. If it says other or something other than tithe on, on, online on holywild.net slash give, Amen. You can go there also and to give that way toward her. Uh, so, anyway, Pastor David, you got announcements to make today. And then uh, there'll be announcements next week. And then we're going to get rid of you. Get to pray him out. Man, I love that sweater. Lama tell you. <laughs> we sure love you and Tony and the kids. 
miscellaneous or special events if you want to put that down also. Amen. And we thank you for praying. You can, you can hold on to that brown card and just pray over it and drop it in later. I just got to know how much to bless her with when she leaves here in the middle of January. Okay? Amen. As we give today, we believe in God for more money, less hours, benefits, sales and gifts and surprises, finding money, bills paid off, settlements, inheritance, rebates and returns, debts demolished, royalties received, favor, success to the kingdom. Oh, it's a little bit late. Got to go, got to go.